I don't think women can have it all. I just don't think so. Um, we pretend we have it all. We pretend we can have it all. Um, you know, my husband and I married for 34 years, and we have two daughters. And every day you have to make a decision on whether you are going to be a wife or a mother. In fact, many times during the day you have to make those decisions. And um, you have to co-opt a lot of people to help you. We co-opted our families to help us. We plan our lives meticulously so we can be decent parents. But if you ask our daughters, I'm not sure they will say that I've been a good mom. I'm not sure. And I try all kinds of coping mechanisms. I mean, I'll tell you a story that happened when my daughter went to Catholic school, Convent of Sacred Heart. And every Wednesday morning, they have class coffee with mothers. Class coffee with mothers for a working woman. How is it going to work? How am I going to take off 9 o'clock on Wednesday mornings to go for a class coffee? So I miss most class coffees. My daughter would come home and she'd say, list of all the mothers that were there, and you were not their mom. First few times, I would die with guilt, but I developed coping mechanisms. I called the school and I said, give me a list of mothers who are not there. So when she came home, when she came home in the evening, she'd say, you were not there, you were not there. I said, uh-huh, Mrs. Rag wasn't there, you know, Mrs. So-and-so wasn't there, so I'm not the only bad mother. You know, you have to cope because you die with guilt. You just die with guilt. My, my observation, David, is that the biological clock and the career clock are in total conflict with each other. Total, complete conflict. When you have to have kids, you have to build your career. Just as you're rising to middle management, your kids need you because they're teenagers, they need you for the teenage years. And that's the time your husband becomes a teenager too. <laughs> so he needs you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> they need you too. So what do you do? And as you grow even more, your parents need you because they're aging. So we're, we're screwed. I mean, we have no, we have no, we cannot have it all. But you know what? Coping mechanisms. Train people at work. Train your family to be your extended um, family. You know, when, I, when I'm in PepsiCo, I travel a lot. And when my kids were tiny, especially my second one, we had strict rules on playing Nintendo. She'd call the office. She didn't care whether I was in China or Japan or India or wherever. She'd call the office, the receptionist pick up the phone. Can I speak to my mommy? Everybody knows if somebody says, can I speak to mommy, it's my daughter. So she'd say, yes, Tara, what can I do for you? I want to play Nintendo. And the receptionist has a set of questions. Have you finished your homework, you know? <laughs> you see, I say this because that's what it takes. She goes through the questions and she says, okay, you can pay Nintendo half an hour. But she leaves me a message. Tara called at five. This is what the sequence of questions I went through. I've given her permission. So it's seamless parenting. But if you don't do that, I'm serious. If you don't develop mechanisms with your secretaries, with the extended office, with everybody around you, it cannot work. It can't work. Motherhood, you know, stay-at-home mother, mothering was a full-time job. Being a CEO of a company is three full-time jobs rolled into one. How can you do justice to all? You can't. The person that hurts the most of this whole thing is your spouse. There's no question about it. You know, Raj always says, you know what, your list is PepsiCo, 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 your two kids, our two kids, your mom, and then the bottom of the list is me. There are two ways to look at it. You should be happy you're on the list. <laughs> Uh, don't, don't complain. <laughs> Just, <laughs> don't complain. He is on the list, very much on the list. But, you know.